Okay, so this is part three of uh, a series of workshops on portfolio. Um, places like UTS, they actually have a class. Um, but we're just covering through workshops. The final and fourth presentation will be on resumes, and Bob will be doing that one. So what I'm going to cover today is how to do your writing within your portfolio. Portfolio is largely a graphic piece, but um, you want to make your writing and descriptions complete but concise without being too wordy. And so we're going to look at some examples. Um, and, and Melanie, I actually took your portfolio and redid it. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> um, to give to give y'all an example of some of the writing, this is my professional portfolio, or the last one I did. Um, needs to be updated, but um, I just have my cover page. You know, you probably have your contact information on the front, um, but I structured it um, with. I grouped the projects. There, there's completed stuff, there's paperwork, which is stuff done on paper that wasn't uh, materialized into projects that may have been master planning or whatever. Um, and then my project management pieces. Your portfolio needs to be tailored to who your audience is. As a project manager, if I was going to be applying for a job, I would want to highlight those large successful management projects and those are at the end of this one. I'm going to run through it. So I structured it and grouped it but the thing about your writing and keeping it concise use bullet points. Now y'all are going to be doing portfolios for transfer. Um, I'm giving you an example of what one looks like to get a job. So I have the title of the project and the location. When you're doing your resume of work experience and listing projects um, that's usually, and then this next bit of uh, information, square footage, size, and cost. So um, if you're doing a, uh, if you're applying to be a project manager somewhere or whatever, you'd want to put up those huge projects because that means you can manage a huge, uh, large project with just two to three sentences describing the project, that it was a green building or lead project, and what my role was, my responsibility on this project. I was not only the architect of record, I was also the lead AP. Those are two very separate full-time positions for one project is a lot of work. But that kind of information is what you want to show along with your images. So here's another one um, where it was a uh, hotel, location, again, cost, size. Those are two big factors there. This with one sentence description, a three-story insulated concrete form uh, prototype for a hotel. And then my role was a construction document uh, production. We, had a, we used a different architect of record, we did it as a team in-house on this one. This was a large residential project, again, name of the project, location, cost, size, two to three sentence description, that's it. Same thing here, using those images that best sell your project, but when you're writing, you want to keep it brief. These were schematic design projects that did not go into the next phases, but I thought were really good because they had SketchUp and floor plans. Again, same thing. Um, I listed the media to show that um, I'm, I was proficient in that type of software. The projects you list in your portfolio, you need to list your type of media. We'll cover that in a minute. Okay, another one. Different phases. You want to pull out those type, that type of information that you think is going to sell or talk best about you. The fact that they were huge projects. Okay, these are my project management projects when I was working for Texas Tech. The name of it, lo 
location, cost and size, and then two to three census. Doesn't take much. Keep it as brief as possible because again, they want to flip through it. And I'll tell you the difference between this audience of trying to get a job and trying to transfer to an upper level university. Is that your watercolor painting? No, that was the guy I worked for, uh, an intern, and then I went to work. We did tech projects, and then I went to work for tech, and he worked for me. <laughs> so um, he did these awesome watercolor renderings, um, and we would pay him for that. Let's do a building, different phases. National Ranching Heritage Center edition. This was actually a demolition project, but I was very proud of it because uh, Jesus Morales is a local granite artist in Rockport. So going back with this green space. Okay, so that is a professional portfolio. Um, now uh, I want to show y'all how to do your transfer. Show me Melanie's that she submitted for the end of the, that one. Okay, this is a PDF. I don't know if we can. You have to use the mouse and the roller. When I do PDFs, I do that. Okay. All right, so one of the things I asked y'all to do is take images and provide descriptions because you've got to sell this. Now, when you are talking to an audience like a university, you want to show that you have been getting those fundamental learning objectives. And there are different ways of doing that. Uh, Melanie, you did a pretty good uh, job of describing the assignment, but not so much about your design concepts. So um, I'll show y'all how I fixed that. I completely redid your whole for last semester. Okay. So um, for each of the assignments, you have it. Uh, scroll through each one, Bob. You did close-ups, which are great because you can't see the entire board, so that's wonderful. The next project, keep going. Again, close-ups because we get to see, and this is wonderful, that we get to see the actual renderings. It's hard to see it on that board. We want to see the entire board to see the composition and how you laid the board out, but we also want to get at the renderings themselves. And great views of your model. Now, here's, this is kind of hard to see, okay? But we do see that the composition is nice and well balanced. It's not rendered, it's not in color, this doesn't stand out. Um, so those are things that they'll be looking for. Line weights and all that other kind of stuff. Next, images of the model. This is great. And you showed up close stuff that you actually made in your model, which is also good. Okay, Because now that we do these digitally, um, unless they say there is a maximum page number, then you'll have to be more concise. But if they don't, you can put it in there. So, okay, let's go to the one that I made of some of these. <laughs> All right, this one's done a little differently. Um, the difference between, oh, it looks like we've got some bullet point difference. Can you switch, swap out the Screens. display, swap out the screens? Oh. Yeah, yeah. under display settings? Yeah, sorry about that. Let me sit back and go ahead and switch it then. No, no, no. No, this one? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, which one? Under this one? Let's see. Oh, under the PowerPoint itself. You do it here. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm. All right, under the table of contents, it helps to list all of the classes. 
now uh, that you're going to be showing work for. I uh, am going to be showing for just this. We're working on this now. But um, especially now that we have come to a consensus on curriculum, they're going to recognize what that is. So, and this may take a couple of slides or two columns. The only thing I wish I had done different was I chose this as a backdrop for my presentation. See how the text, when it comes over here, you can't see it? Make sure it's visible, that's important. So I changed it here to white. So I would, I would change this up. This graphic is probably dominating. But what I've done is each of the assignments are listed under the class. The reason why I do this is so that the people looking at it can go, oh, so this is design one, this is design two, and know what to expect. Because what they're looking at is, is this student prepared to go into design or to third year design? So they want to see that you have met all the learning objectives for those first two years. And that's what you want to sell and show off. Now, um, one of the ways of doing that, I know this is a lot of writing, and it actually I could have gone back and edited it some more, but I took this straight from the syllabus. And that's why I, we have it in the syllabus. So you can go back, and you can just copy it from Canvas, make it concise. I went through, this was actually a whole slide just for this portion here, but I went through and started editing. If I went through and edited a third time, it would have been shorter, which is what I recommend you do. Design principles. Studio focuses on fundamental principles. I listed them. So they know you've covered this. And then um, the exhibition facility. I have, uh, since we, this was a project where it went all the way through with an, a certain archetype. I went ahead and listed it down here. That doesn't mean that I would do that for this class we're doing now. Okay. So, Melanie, this is word for word the exact same images from your previous portfolio. You mentioned I researched various exhibition facilities and examined similar types of spaces and how they relate to each other. I created a spatial diagram that demonstrates the relationship of each space. I then developed my design analysis describing each space, including size, shape. You're, what you're doing is re-list, you know, you're listing everything we covered in the assignment. But when you talk about your actual design concept, I described my concepts and ideas consisting of light color and a calm atmosphere. Not so much. You want to talk about your design. So with doing it previously, um, what I've done different is I listed, we have, it is a project analysis of exhibition facility archetype. What the assignment was, grading criteria. These grading criteria will be things that um, they also will be looking for, as well as spatial relationships. This also can be reduced and edited further. Again, bullet points, okay? Um, but we can have a tendency to be wordy, but if I went through it another time, I could make it more concise, which is what you want to do. Um, so I reshot some of the pictures, and look, and this is the description I used, one sentence based on what you had. You could probably have done a couple sentences. Again, project descriptions, no more than three sentences. So anywhere between one and three sentences. And then I used some picture captions. This is your spatial diagram. This is your research and design concepts, okay? For the second project, it was a plan-driven horizontal. This first sentence right here talks about the assignment. This one talks about what the deliverable was and hand letter. The, that's a big deal because this same project is done at U of H and Texas Tech, but they don't have some of the same criteria that we do, such as the hand lettering. I emphasize that, so they would be like, oh, so they got all our stuff and then some. 
And then the, again, the grading criteria. Your boards, and I reshot the pictures and cropped them and made them really nice. I get, you know, which drawings are in what board. And then right here, I reworded into two sentences your design concepts based on memory of what I thought. Some of the big things that stuck out in your design. This design proposal consists of an exhibition, consists of exhibition spaces, proofread. Big, big, big proofread. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Enhanced by strategically placed narrow ribbon windows with colored glass generating a calm atmosphere to display artwork. The outdoor gallery is a roof garden placed over the secondary galleries adjacent to the two-story main gallery space. That talks a lot more about your design in a very brief way. And even then, I could go narrow wi ribbon windows. Narrow and ribbon are kind of redundant. So you want to use your adjectives and be more concise. The other thing that is important when you're documenting your work is to mention the type of media. Watercolor on watercolor pa paper with black ink. Because they're also looking at your rendering skills. If it was an AutoCAD um, or a computer rendering, you would mention the software that you used and the version. AutoCAD 2014. Uh, Autodesk 3DS Max Studio um, 2015. And any big features and things like that. Um, so, and then the next project again, this is the design. So this is the important stuff. And then what the deliverable was and the grading criteria. In order of priority, if you're trying to make things more concise, this first statement is the most important about the project. That was the assignment. Then the deliverable of what was expected, especially about the hand lettering skills, Grading criteria, not as important as the first two statements. Um, so if you're really trying to be concise, if I had to narrow it down more and put all my images on the same slide, I'd just use the top one. And again, I just have the boards. I would do, again, close-ups of those drawings so they can see how well you put them together. Again, I mentioned the media. Um, and then my description. This design proposal consists of various exhibition spaces with light wells to diffuse the natural light and generating a calming atmosphere through indirect natural lighting. I should just put indirect light. Um, and any other main features or design concepts of your um, project. And then the model. So depending on the requirements of the portfolio submission, because with each school, they're going to require different things. You're going to, the big thing is here, even with the media, I mentioned it, plexiglass and museum board. I think you ended up, was it illustration board instead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, you want to make sure you list those things. Now, the other thing is that is important is the date. Now, because I listed the semester you took that design class, I didn't see a, name, a reason to put in the date. Again, you don't want to be redundant. You want to be as concise as possible. So, all right, next thing I want to cover. All right. So that is writing in your portfolio. All right, again, a lot of the content that you're requiring to put in can come directly from Canvas, especially the syllabus. The syllabus that we use for design studios um, utilizes a lot of the same information that the universities have in theirs. What you want to point out are those learning objectives and things that 
you're trying to accomplish goal-wise with each of the assignments and projects, and, and we try to list those um, for your convenience so that when you go back, you, all you have to do is print off the syllabus and say, this is what we covered in class, or if it's in your portfolio, it's right there and it's not questionable. But like, oh, okay, you covered this, I get it, all right. Um, again, portfolios, you don't want a lot of writing, but because you're talking to a university you're trying to transfer to, you want to have those learning objectives. And a lot of that is found in syllabus. We even list the NAV criteria, but a lot of those learning outcomes, all that information came from goals, design principles, the components. You see how much I cut out? The studio projects all came from the syllabus and the assignment instructions. Now, we right now, you can apply for scholarships and financial aid for next year. Um, and I, the deadline is in April. But if you just go to the main website and apply for scholarships, there is a lot of money out there. So this is, you definitely want to do that. Um, complete list of the scholarships, how to apply. We do have architecture and construction scholarships, but I would apply for as much as you possibly can. And yes, it will pay for your supplies, not just your textbooks. And because we have a tool list, you can take that in and, and it'll take care of that. Um, now, usually financial aid and scholarships don't cover summer. So you want to make sure that you make sure you're covered for that. Follow the instructions. At most everybody has a 2.0 GPA. Um, They even have outside scholarships. I would go after whatever you can. Okay, and it has different directions. I believe the deadlines for these are um, full of something. I'll put it on there. Uh, I send out information and we'll want to put it uh, on Facebook or whatever. Um, no, I'm looking for some dates. Main scholarship or page. I had it written down on my calendar. Okay. And then there's financial aid. Deadlines and milestones. you know because I have it written down. Okay. So I encourage you to do that if you're continuing as a student here uh, for next year. Uh, we are working on trying to develop a gap scholarship fund to help fund for summers. Um, now when you're applying for uh, transfer for other schools, what they look at is one, nothing below a C will transfer. I'm just telling you that now. T may have got, a D may have gotten you passed, but it will not transfer, okay? So you might wanna go ahead and retake it here. Um, <clears throat> they're they're gonna be looking for your degree plan and stuff, and usually most schools, only one or two, are for spring admissions. It's usually the fall, and that's because of the design sequence. So the design, uh, the um, the applications for transfer are happening right now, and they're usually due in March. They also have scholarships. I brought up UTA because Melanie, that's where you're looking at, and uh, they have a really good page on how to do the transfer. 
especially since they take in people from all over. They're really good about it, so is Texas Tech. With an Associates of Science, you um, are still an undergraduate. An undergraduate is bachelor's and below. <laughs> Graduate is above that, you're not that. Now, every student, no matter what, even current students in the current program up at that school have to submit a portfolio for review. Um, so y'all are kind of in the same boat, except now you also have to be admitted into their program. Um, the reason why UT doesn't take as many is because they're taking from their own batch and it's highly competitive, but that doesn't mean that you can't get in. Um, so undergraduate admissions. So you see that's for fall only, which means everything's due in March. That's also when scholarships are due, and there are a ton. Texas Tech has the most. Um, and you can get information. Let's start with portfolio review. When you're doing your portfolio and you're looking to transfer to another school, look and see what their requirements are. So if you have transfer coursework in architecture or interior design, you have to participate in portfolio review to see where they will place you in the design sequence. And the reason why I want y'all to place those learning objectives and goals in your portfolio is so they can better place you. Because we want you in that third year. We don't want them saying, oh, well, you need to repeat this. No, we don't want that at all. Okay, so if you want your portfolio returned to you, you have to provide self-addressed postage page envelope package or come pick it up. Now, why would you want it returned? Before we, the digital age, we had to do these by hand, which means we took professional photographs, had them blown up. My work, if you want 11 by 17 photo of your work, I had to have it done, and it was done in San Antonio. There was nowhere else I could get it done. It was expensive. And um, we put that in those big black binders on that black background and we had to cut out our little descriptions, type it up, cut it out, paste it. That was the old way of doing things. Some people still do that. Um, I'd show you what mine looks like. It's at, it's at home. It has a lot of my photography and artwork as well as projects. But um, that was the old way of doing things. That's expensive. So if you want it returned to you, that's what that means. <laughs> now, um, they want an actual 11 by 14. So you can take a digital and do graphic design and print it out on 11 by 14, print it out on nice photo paper, spiral bound, bind it in some way, shape, or form, and you'll send the submission up there. They want a hard copy. See, they say no CDs or emails, no digital copies. So you're going to have to Make sure you look at these instructions. Must present visual work that corresponds to each course by doing the table of contents, I've done that, um, in need of review by the School of Architecture. You'll need to include the course description, which is also in the syllabus, guys, um, a, or a faculty member syllabus for each course, which you can do that as well. So we could just put out the syllabus like just put it in with how would you even I would reformat the text but the great thing about canvas is you can copy and paste all of it um, they but they encourage you to provide your own brief summary of each course however the visual work will be the determining factor so whereas you had the composition of your boards You'll want to do the close-ups as well so they can see it on a, sec on a secondary slide. For the evaluation process, students provide in their portfolio samples of original visual work from each course, completed at previous institutions. Um, they'll review it and you know, see if they're going to give you transfer credit or not. And then they'll tell you and where to send it. Okay, so that's the review. There's the 
requirements. Um, students must complete admissions process before the June 1st deadline. That's with the regular school. They accept the first 300 students that have completed their admissions and enrollment through the regular school. You have to get your official transcripts and fees to the Office of Admissions. You have tuition information. All freshman transfer students new to UT Arlington are required to attend student orientation. And then they have an advising page. I recommend you call them. These are just standard enrollment admissions for the college. Um, transfer equivalency. These are all the colleges that transfer to UTA. I work, uh, Berlin is at Austin, El Paso is Robert, uh, San Antonio College is Duane, Tarrant County College is Arnie, and that, their program directly goes because they're in Dallas. Um, so here are the various transfer equivalencies. Um, what we want to find out, though, is time. That's a big one, especially if you're transferring a portfolio review. Here they just have just kind of how it's set up. your core, um, usually, you know, if you're transferring, y'all will have technically a core incomplete, but you still have most of your core. And the reason why is I would rather y'all take physics there than here. You can get your math courses or whatever. The thing to do is to find uh, what their requirement is and align with that. And the new degree program allows you to do that because you can pick your life science that will best align. Um, but you want to find out what their requirements are. Um, there should be some due dates in here. They usually do. Other schools do. Okay, scholarships. Um, Yes, there are scholarships. There are ones just for various schools, and there are ones within the College of Architecture itself. And this is important to know, because this is how I got all of mine. I couldn't get anything coming out of high school. Didn't know where to look was what, one thing. Texas Tech made it where they said, okay, if you do a portfolio, um, and Apply, just check off the scholarships you want to apply for. They made it easy. I don't know ever, if everybody is that easy. Plus, Texas Tech has the most money in scholarships thanks to the development coordinator. Um, they also now have a transfer student scholarship. Our firm uh, put in for that as well. But they're not the only one. And there are AIA chapters. And then there's TAF. There are so many scholarships out there for architecture, it's unreal. And a lot of them get unused because people don't know where to look. There is one for women who are starting, uh, tra who are transferring. Yeah. From a, from a community college to a transfer. For which school or is it just general? It's, it's from the AIA National. AIA National? So look at the different organizations. Um, and there are, there are scholarships. I do recommend you going after them because not a lot of people know where to look or that there are any. Fortunately, UTA has them listed. I don't know about where Texas Tech would look at their site, what theirs looks like. But um, there, there is help, but it's also right now because everybody else is applying for those scholarships. 
So um, one of the things that I wanted to cover with this is how to make your project descriptions uh, concise. What we're going to cover, what Bob is going to cover in the next one is how to do your resume. And if you need any letters of recommendation um, and things like that, we will be happy to write letters of recommendation if you provide us all the information, such as who it is addressed to, the address of where the letter needs to go. If we need to provide it in an envelope and you send it along with your materials or if we have to mail it ourselves. We also need to know what the deadline is if we need to send it when it's when it needs to be there. If um, if you're sending it, give us a few, you know, give us time ahead of that so that we know when to get you your letters. So um, because usually when you're applying for all of these, you'll have to do some sort of resume, some sort of transcript. Transcripts order early, guys. Y'all know by experience how long it takes for transcripts to get to schools. It can take months, okay? You might wanna have an unofficial copy on hand, which I'm always happy to print off for you, uh, to put in until that official one gets there, okay? For UTA, you have until June 1st for that transcript, but when you're applying to the College of Architecture or other stuff, they can see what you've taken and uh, completed degree plans. We're happy to put all of that information together for you and help you with that because the goal here is that you get into the school and you get placed accordingly. Because it's so hard, especially if you're not standing there in front of the review committee, which you never will, unless they do an interview process, which I don't know of any schools that do interviews. Um, that submission is the only thing that talks about you. So you've got to do it in a way that communicates yourself, your strengths, and those things of why they want to have you be a part of their college, okay? So um, I recommend not only just the courses, but if you want to have a miscellaneous section, if the portfolio review is not limited by pages, have your extra stuff, not just your courses. Uh, Anthony, you're a fantastic artist. Even the stuff you did in high school, include it. Your sketches, whatever it takes, um, include it. Uh, if y'all need syllabi of any anything, we are happy to provide it. Um, but again, it's all on campus, and you can print and adjust however you need to. Um, so any questions on how to apply for transfer and writing for your portfolio? When do um, the schools usually get back to you? Like after you submit portfolios, it take a while for them to like review them and stuff? It may be May or June okay. before they get back to you. And, and that's why they do it in the spring and you can only enter into the fall. It could be the summer before you find out. Right. Uh, knowing these guys and how busy it gets and getting them all together and as many portfolios as they look at, and they sit around and argue for a while um, until they decide. So, and I know a lot of folks on those committees. So. Um, it is a committee, it's not necessarily just one person. Um, <coughs> any other questions? All right, that's all we got. Resumes next.